All right, it's great to be here. It's so exciting to see this room full of people. Uh, I'm happy to talk briefly, and, and Jean is going to join me too. We're going to talk about three things kind of that we've learned and kind of taken away from micro.blog over the last year. First is user experience, uh, a little bit about content ownership and how we see it, and the and then Jean will talk about the community. And so what is micro.blog? I, I think most people probably have heard of it here, but I really like uh, the way Brent put this, um, I was thinking back to this quote, he said, you know, it's not an alternative silo, instead it's what you build and you believe that the web is the great uh, social network. And I really think that captures it. It's like, it's not, it's not um, just what the first version of micro.blog is, but what we think it should be. And of course, the web is a social network, you know, that's about identity as domain names, it's about web mentions. Um, and so on. And so as I was building micro.blog, I realized, you know, that the indie web and micro.blog, of course, there's a bunch of overlap. I had been reading like Tantex blog for years, going back to early South by Southwest days. And so I was aware of the indie web, but when I started to work on micro.blog, I didn't set out to build something indie web friendly. I just set out to solve these problems, but it turned out that there was so much overlap between the indie web and micro.blog. It just made sense for these things to be compatible. Um, so the indie web, obviously, these are kind of the building blocks of the indie web. Micro.blog, these are the same foundations. So when we set out to uh, have posting, originally I had like a private, like custom posting API, but when I saw Micropub, it just made sense to scrap what I had and use Micropub. Of course, there's some differences, right? So we don't have Microsub yet. Uh, we have a lot on feeds, RSS and JSON feed. Uh, we support other posting formats for compatibility with other clients like MetaWebLog. And the, um, the important part of about feeds is just reaching more people and being more compatible with ex existing websites. And so that gets like to the generation four on the indie web chart. And this is really the goal of micro.blog. Mainstream users, right, everybody. And it's really about building better user experiences. So when Brent said, you know, you want to build um, what you think of uh, the web as a whole, you know, social network, he's really saying, like, let's set out to make the web better. Let's make the web as easy to use uh, and as popular as Twitter. And that's how I see kind of the mainstream use, uh, users that could use micro.blog. And if you go back to when Twitter was really popular, 2009, uh, it's, it's still really popular, but like at the height of, uh, of particularly like third party clients and developers using Twitter, I love this, uh, what John Gruber, who uh, writes about Apple at Daring Fireball said, he said it was a playground for UI design, these Twitter apps. Um, he said Twitter is such a simple service overall, but you look at a few of these screenshots and you'll see very different UI designs, right? Not in terms of visual style, but in terms of layout and structure and flow, and, and back in those old days, I mean, I built a Twitter app, uh, it was a third party client called Tweet Library, it had a way to collect different tweets together. Um, I worked on the, I created the, the Tweet Marker you know, API for, for syncing timeline. It was just a really great time to build these apps and everybody had a slightly different take on it. And even some of the things we take for granted from Twitter, like the word tweet, like these came from third party developers. And so I think we need these kind of breakthroughs on the indie web as well not just cute gimmicky names like you know tweet and the bird icon but like approachable software that eventually everyone will be able to use so like mainstream apps that are like common like this is the app that everybody uses but also kind of niche focused apps that we can experiment with and move uh, ui forward so for micro.blog we have kind of a suite of apps we have the main micro.blog app we have this app sunlit for photos and an app wavelength for podcasts and if you haven't seen it the, the main micro.blog app the idea was just really simple, you type something in, as simple as tweeting, this goes to your WordPress blog, or wherever your blog's hosted, if micro.blog's hosting it for you, right, it goes to that. Um, focus on photo blogging, make it really as, as easy to use as possible, kind of Insta Instagram-like with filters, and again, like, these photos don't go to, like, a generic photos.micro.blog URL or CDN or something, they're on your own domain name. Like, when you use it, they're at your own domain name, and that's where they live. With Sunlit, we're actually trying to go one step further. This is, if this plays, yeah, if, this is a new version of Sunlit we've been working on. And it really, it's a dedicated app just for, for photos. And the new version is really, gives you a more of an Instagram-like experience in terms of the timeline and replying and just trying to make it as simple as possible. And again, like all these photos that you're seeing in here are just someone's blog, right? 
Um, I wanted to show one third-party app that someone wrote for micro.blog called Icro, just because I think it highlights where someone could take basically the same thing as the main micro.blog app and have a different take on it, different way to do uh, photos and just different UI. So the second thing, content ownership. Um, this is, if you go to the indie web principles that Aaron talked about, like this is the first thing, right? Owning your own data is the first and I think the most important principle. And, you know, I was talking, uh, a couple of us were talking last night about Mastodon and it seems like an odd place to start to talk about um, content ownership and domain names, but I think I, I found actually that contrasting what we're trying to do with micro.blog and a lot of what the IndieWeb is trying to do with other services and platforms like Mastodon, it, uh, it helps kind of think about the, the priorities. And so, of course, with Mastodon, you know, we, you're probably familiar with it, but you have a bunch of instances and it's a federated um, system where you have a bunch of users or even just a handful of users on these instances, but that's not really what I want, right? I just want my own domain and I just want me, not an instance with a bunch of people. And a, having your own domain name is of course a return to how the web used to be, where if your web host went out of business or something changed and you wanted to move, find a new host, point the domain name to the site, everything just works. I'm sure a bunch of y'all uh, have done this just like I have over the years. So how do we get more users to care about this, right? With micro.blog, there's a bunch of people that have joined because they're frustrated with Twitter. And the challenge is like highlighting how we can have an alternative to Twitter and how we can try to solve some of those problems, but also prioritize content ownership. So when they come in, they are also aware of having their own domain name. And one of the things that I think we need to focus on is just not getting people lost too much in the weeds with the technical stuff and the you know open source or SF, you know, FTPing somewhere or just getting going a little too far for the people that are just starting and to focus on the domain names. So content ownership, before anything else, needs to be about the URLs. And so we've tried to do that uh, with micro.blog. Um, it's not about open source necessarily, but it's about the domain names and getting people to think about that. So the whole structure of micro.blog is actually around this. It, it, micro.blog is actually two things from a technical perspective. It's like two completely unrelated things. There's a blog hosting platform and there's a social network. And it confuses people and we still need to work on this and how we communicate this. But it's really powerful because the hosting platform, it's actually built on Jekyll with a bunch of other stuff we've done. And it's actually completely independent of the timeline and the social network. It's all based on feeds. So it doesn't matter if you use WordPress or we host a blog for you. The, the, the separation is there so that if you have your own site and you're hosting it on micro.blog, your own domain name, you can move it and get your content out. And I hope that you know, as people join the community, they also discover, and we're seeing this happen, they discover how empowering it is to write at their own domain name and have their own site. Because the goal is getting more people to blog. And so, you know, of course, you know, we have, you can bring your own blog to micro.blog, use it for free, or you can pay us $5 a month, we'll host it for you. And the nice thing about this is that the goal that we have of like getting more people to blog and have their own domain name is perfectly aligned with the business model. Whereas the goal for ad-supported social networks is more eyeballs, and there's conflicts with that. We're just happy if people blog. Doesn't matter how often they use it, how many times they reload, or who they follow. If they're blogging more often, that's a success, and that's that's happy. So that we're happy about that. So I, I love seeing people discover micro.blog and then also find out about the indie web and realize this kind of side effect of having your own domain name. Um, and the value of that. And so with that, I'm going to talk about community, and I'm gonna hand it over to Gene. Thanks, Fenton, and thanks everybody for being here. Uh, it is very exciting to be here. This is my second year coming to Indie Web Summit, and um, looking forward to meeting the people I haven't met yet, and to chatting more with people I met last year. Um, and so speaking of community, um, as you might know, last year Manton uh, started micro.blog with a Kickstarter, um, had a very modest goal which was immediately met, and he, um, um, inter the money goal was met. The, the bigger goal and it was not modest at all, was building a platform um, that would encourage people to blog and also to interact 
in a safe and welcoming community. And so after the initial um, um, funding target was met, uh, Manton, uh, oops, I skipped a slide. Did I? Yeah, no, I didn't, sorry, sorry. It's hard to use somebody else's slides. Uh, <laughs> the, um, I mean, this was basically the call that while we have, um, we want to encourage blogging and we want people to own their own content and of course they control their own content, we have a timeline where people interact and we have a responsibility, we feel, to making that a timeline experience that where people feel, you know, that they're safe and, and actually welcomed. And so uh, Manton set this, this new funding target uh, and said, with this, if I hit this target, I'm going to hire a community manager. Um, to, and I was really impressed because that was a, uh, a stretch goal I had never seen. It was like, I'm going to do better for the community. I'm going to hire somebody else. And I want it to be this way from the start. And I, I was pretty excited about that. And I, I just, you know, un, unsolicited to it, sent him an email and said, you know, I might be interested in that job. <laughs> and and uh, it turns out I was. It's, you know, sometimes you get something in your head, you read about it or you hear about it and you just can't stop thinking about it. I first thought like, that's, that's a crazy idea. But I had been working in a nonprofit the last four years, you know, essentially as a volunteer um, building um, App Camp for Girls, which is awesome nonprofit organization helping to get uh, more gender diversity into tech, but um, I'm not really a nonprofit professional. I'm like a, a, a marketing person who likes to work with software, and so I was anxious to get back to that. Um, and so, so here I am. And um, one the the thing about a community is that it needs caretakers. So. Um, you know, as we've seen at Twitter, uh, neglect is not benign. Um, Mike Montero, who you know some of you know and probably have, have followed on Twitter before, um, invoked this metaphor of the garden. You know that anybody who's tended a garden, not me actually, uh, an actual garden, um, knows that for the good stuff to grow, you have to deal with the bad stuff. You can't let the weeds choke the vegetables. And I think we've seen a lot of weeds and fewer vegetables over those years from the, when we were really excited about something like Twitter to today. Um, and so we do work hard at that. Um, one of the things we do to cultivate community, we have on the, um, built into Microdot blogs, uh, um, interface is a, what we call the discover tab. And we had to play around in the beginning a bit to figure out exactly what would be helpful. But people wanted to find other people to follow. You know, it's a brand new network and not everybody was coming over from Twitter. So what we finally hit on, Manton uh, started this and now we do this a couple times a day actually, is we curate a feed that is just people from the community with interesting posts that would probably appeal to at least one other person in the community. And it has really worked out a lot better than I could have even expected because I see this all the time now. If somebody has a question, I put their question into Discover and somebody else just you know happens to find it and answers it and those people get into a conversation and then you have a whole little area of your garden growing just by, by surfacing, you know, People's um, people's posts, people's questions, even questions about micro dot blog. Like I've I have put it up there where people said, "Why should I even be here?" You know, I don't know anybody here, <laughs> and now they know a lot of people because, of course, the community jumped in. Invariably, somebody in the community answers. We also started a microcast um, featuring a different member of the community every week and. Um, I do interviews, they're short, you know, <laughs> we thought they would be really short, like five minutes, but it's, I can't talk to somebody for only five minutes, so <laughs> be prepared. If we start talking <laughs> today or tomorrow, give me at least five minutes. Um, they're more uh, between 10 and 15 minutes now, but generally we talk, I ask them like how they got to Microdot blog, what drew them to blogging, had they blogged before, very many stories of you know, a path littered with domain names that they don't use anymore and, and blogs that they abandoned at various places. So 
there's a lot of that going on, and I think when people realize they're not the only ones, we're not trying to be like the the most amazing professional bloggers, and if you you aren't going to be that kind of person, you can't be part of the community. Um, and I I crowdsource the the uh, the number the sorry I crowdsource the the guests like I, I ask people you know who they want to see on it I don't want to interview my friends and in fact I pretty much avoid it interviewing anybody I actually know um, but um, I do make an effort to balance out like that we have a diverse range of backgrounds of the guests on the show. Because if it was just a cross-section, it would be a lot of uh, white guys who work in technology. And nothing wrong with that, but it, uh, once a week, it would be nice to hear from maybe somebody else. So, <laughs> um, And <clears throat> what the building of the community is not only from altruism. I mean, we certainly are motivated by you know, wish to, to do something that helps the community, but we also, um, as people feel engaged, as they feel included, and they feel that it's safe for them to make recommendations or take, you know, um, some initiative on their own, they start building stuff for the platform. So this, for example, is a meetup page created by uh, Jason Burke, one of our um, community members. And, you know, we had been talking about meetups in different places, and you know, we've had them, but we've never had like a, a central location to figure out where they are. So that was pretty cool, and he just did that completely on his own. Our Slack channel, I mean, our Slack um, board, we have a bunch of different channels, like the WordPress channel and David Shansky answering questions. You know, this has helped us out immensely because, of course, in the beginning, there was just Manton answering questions, but now as the community grows, there's just a lot of interaction and Honestly, some people know stuff that Manton doesn't know. And uh, that helps us um, focus on other things and not only do customer support. Uh, another user, Eli, created a wiki to co collect all the interesting links that people, uh, of articles people have written about micro.blog and how to use it. So that was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but we have a ways to go. <laughs> to, this is our documentation. and. <laughs> Um, you know, we think owning your content is really important and having your own domain name is critical, yet we have not done a very good job of explaining this to what we are calling Generation 4 users um, who probably don't know what a DNS record is, even if they know what DNS stands for, um, myself included, you know, when I first got started. And so we have to remember, all of us, that the words are part of the design. And too many features, too many t technical um, options can mean a lot of loser, uh, losers. A lot of users get lost. That's there's no losers in this community. Um, you just get overwhelmed by all the technology when a lot of people would be fine just knowing the basics. So we don't want to push people all into the deep end before they're ready. Um, they'll get frustrated. They'll need rescuing. Um, many will just give up, but <clears throat> um, we need to um, have tools that are easier for people to use that don't need to know the, what DNS actually stands for. Um, and, um, you know, let's just start out in the shallow end for most people that get them a, a domain name, get them something like micro.blog, some, um, some kind of friendly indie web friendly hosting platform instead of self-hosting a WordPress blog maybe at the beginning. I can tell you from my experience interviewing people on Micro Monday that a lot of people have moved from having a host at micro.blog with us to, to some sort of um, web hosting platform that they have a lot more control over the, you know, um, how it works and how it looks. But, Getting people started, I think that's our as as our our goal, and we need to, you know, we we at Micro Blog, and I think we as indie web um, community need to focus on on building things for those people. And uh, so, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Even if Generation Four is not a monolithic group, 
and it takes a, a whole range of people. So we want to attract them with easy to use platform with the benefits of owning their own content on their own domain, the promise of a safe and welcoming community, and that gives us the ability as a community to reach the broadest range of users regardless of which generation they fall into. Thanks for listening.